Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And the Japanese Grand Prix was... Well, it started about 12 hours ago nearly. Although it was sort of delayed. Um, I didn't actually watch it live. I decided to watch the Bathurst 1000 live instead. And I really enjoyed that race. And I'm going to stick by my decision. Um, the Japanese Grand Prix was a very wet race. At least to begin with. And that saw the downfall of Carla Sainz and Alexander Albon. And a red flag. Which brought about a bit of a delay. There's been controversy with the safety vehicles being on track when the cars are still going round and it sort of brought about the spectre of the fatal accident eight years ago of uh, Jules Bianchi and I'm sure that's going to be dragged out for the next few weeks and the FIA are going to be investigating and reasons have to be given. It does seem like a very silly mistake. Um, if they're going to red flag the race anyway, surely they could have waited two, three minutes. Um, so we had a very much shorter Japanese Grand Prix. And the end result of that is Max Verstappen won the race and is the 2022 Formula One World Champion with, was it four or five races left? I've lost track. He's won it pretty early. And Charles Leclerc, I mean, he's been disappointing. He's won races, but he's not been the close challenger to the championship that he should have been. There was a mistake in France. Again here, he made a mistake on the last lap, cut the chicane. He got demoted to second, no, to third place behind Sergio Perez. Red Bull get another 1-2 this year. Um, it's... It's going to be pretty soon Red Bull going to tie up the constructors. And Sergio Perez is doing well in the fight for second in the championship. This year couldn't be going any better for Red Bull. And this was another fantastic drive from Max Verstappen. He looks pretty unstoppable at the moment. As do Red Bull. This is what their 8th or ninth uh, win in a row. That's decent. And hopefully we don't get another 5 years of this. But for now... Uh, Max Verstappen is doing a very, very good job. Uh, the race itself was enjoyable. I enjoyed watching it. And we have a lot of stuff going on off the track to talk about as well. Going through the rest of the field, Esteban Ocon put in a fantastic performance to finish fourth. Very good result for him and a very good result for Alpine. And he held off Lewis Hamilton for most of the end of the race. Probably even half the race, really. Close to half the race. Um, no DRS, which was good, in my opinion. If Lewis Hamilton had DRS, he'd have just breezed past Esteban Ocon at some point. Without it, we got some good fighting. Lewis Hamilton really struggled to even get close to Esteban Ocon. He really didn't have to pace down the straights. He must be sick to death of the back of Alpines. After being stuck behind Alonso at the Monaco Grand Prix, and I think he's caught Alonso in traffic a few times, he must really, really hate the back of the Alpine car. Um, not an amazing result for Mercedes, only 5th and 8th. Um, Lewis Hamilton, he's still losing ground to some of the drivers, but you get one or two. Obviously, Russell and Science finished behind him, and Science didn't finish at all, so he's caught up to those two a bit, but he's not making massive inroads into them. Really, I think the best he can hope for this year is fourth in the championship if he beats Russell and Sainz. And that's a big if. Because even though he has had a few better results here in Evan Russell, at best he's chipping away at him. He's not really getting a massive points gain. Carlos Sainz, he's had his issues this year. This mistake was probably more his fault. But you can blame the conditions as well. It's still not great. And... Sebastian Vettel pitted at the right time, managed to bring it home in sixth. A very, very good result in his final Japanese Grand Prix. Um, Alonso was seventh. Again, good result for him. Good result for Alpine. In George Russell was eighth. Actually, not seventh. 
Did I say fifth and eighth? I can't remember. But George Russell was eighth. He survived. Nothing really too much to say about it. It was not a great performance. Nicholas Latifi got ninth and got points for Williams. Pretty shocking. Didn't think I'd see it happen this year. And it happens just as he announces that. Um, well, yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. But he's, I think, accepted he's not going to be in Formula 1 next year. Uh, Lando Norris in 10th. I think McLaren will be very disappointed. They're definitely losing ground after making big gains in Singapore. Ricardo 11th. I mean, the rest of the field were there. There wasn't too many incidents in this race, which was surprising considering it was a very wet race. So to the incidents off the field, obviously we still have the budget from 2021 to come out next week by the looks of it. I think it was supposed to come out before Japan. Um, that's going to be looked at next week. Interesting to see what the results of that are. Uh, we have... Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly confirmed at Alpine next year. Honestly, after what a mess Alpine have made of their driver lineup, I think Pierre Gasly is a very decent signing. Now, I think he can drive to the level of Esteban Ocon. I think it at least is on par to their driver lineup now. So it's a net positive, but obviously, if Oscar Piastri turns out to be the next big thing, it will still be a loss. But that's their own fault. They messed around and screwed it up. But Ocon and Gasly is a good driver lineup. Alpha Tori have confirmed that Nick De Vries will be driving for them next year, which is a bit of a shock. I thought he'd have gone to Mercedes team. I had him pegged for Williams. But no, he'll be at Alpha Tauri alongside Yuki Tsunoda. Very good driver lineup, and I'm very excited to see what he can do in Formula One. That just leaves two seats unconfirmed for 2023. Nicholas Latifi is definitely out of Williams. It's going to be interesting to see who replaces him. I don't know who the favourite is. Um, my money at the moment, I guess, would be on Logan Sargent because he was linked very heavily at various points in the Formula 2 season. Although, since then, he struggled to perform and he's had a few crashes himself. I don't know if that will turn Williams off, but I'm sure they would want an American driver. I think American drivers will be sort of very in over the next few years, especially with three Grand Prix in America. And also the Haas seat of Mick Schumacher has still not been confirmed. Um, I think they will confirm that Mick Schumacher will get another year. I think. I, I mean, I know Nico Hulkenberg has been linked to that seat, but that is such a boring choice. And honestly, I can't think of anyone else. Um, probably... I mean, every high runner in the Formula 2 series is linked to a Formula 1 team. So unless they borrow one of Ferrari's drivers, I guess Marcus Armstrong or Jehan de Ruvula. But I don't think either of those two really good enough for Formula 1. I like de Ruvula. I want nothing against Armstrong really either. But de Ruvula, he's good sometimes, not so much other times. So I don't see him getting a chance in Formula 1. But I don't know who else Haas would get. Obviously, they have Nico Hulkenberg and Pietro Filippoli on their books. They seem to have moved on from Pietro Filippoli. There doesn't seem to be any interest in giving him another go in Formula 1. So who else is there? It'll probably be Nico Hulkenberg, which is quite sad. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have about the Japanese Grand Prix. The next big thing, of course, will be the release of the budgets and... All the arguments that are going to come from that next week, hopefully. Beyond that, Formula 1 is back in a couple of weeks' time. And it's all going to be about the fight for second in the championship now. Leclerc versus Perez with others possibly catching them if things don't go Perez and Leclerc's way. So, four rounds left in America, Mexico, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. Back in a couple of weeks' time with the American Grand Prix. It's going to be nice to have a little break. There's almost no motorsport next weekend. Um, I think it is literally just European Le Mans, Euro Formula and Formula Regional European. So it might be a quiet one, but I will still have plenty of motorsport content. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and tell me your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of the Japanese Grand Prix? Thank you for watching and have a good one.